Many great leaders have shaped the history of Senecomica, but the most widely known is likely Paramount Chief Powhatan. If you've ever seen Disney's Pocahontas, you have already been introduced to him as her middle-aged father who begins the children's movie distrustful of the Jamestown colonists, but is convinced by his daughter to make peace with the Englishmen by the time the credits roll. As you can likely suspect, the real Paramount Chief Powhatan was a much more dynamic and complex person. So, who was the real Paramount Chief Powhatan then? Paramount Chief Powhatan was born in the town of Powhatan, near the falls of the James River. His personal name was actually Wahan Seneca, with Powhatan being more akin to a nickname. He held the title of Paramount Chief, or Mamanatoic, meaning he ruled over many tribes and towns in Senecomica. Historically, his Paramount Chiefdom has sometimes been called the Powhatan Confederacy, but it is important to remember that, unlike a confederacy which is a collection of sovereign groups united under a common purpose, Paramount Chief Powhatan had supreme control over his territories. He inherited six tribes from his mother, as power was passed matrilineally, meaning through one's mother's lineage, which were the territories of Powhatan, Arahatic, Appomattox, Pamunkey, Yottenund, and Mattapanint. Over the following years, though, Paramount Chief Powhatan grew his territories through diplomacy, coercion, and force to between 30 and 35 tribes stretching at times from around modern-day Washington, D.C. to North Carolina. Senecomica borders groups to the east and south, such as the Monacan, Nottoway, and Tuscaroras peoples. Paramount Chief Powhatan was described by Englishmen who met him as, quote, a tall, well-proportioned man with a sour look, his head somewhat gray, his beard so thin that it seems none at all, his age nearly 60, of a very able and hardy body to endure any labor. Another Englishman who never personally met Paramount Chief Powhatan described him as, quote, a goodly old man, not yet shrinking, of a tall stature and clean limbs, of a sad aspect, round fat visage with gray hairs, but plain and thin hanging upon his broad shoulders, some few hairs upon his chin and so on his upper lip. He hath been a strong and able man, sinewy, active, and of a daring spirit, vigilant, ambitious, subtle to enlarge his dominions. Cruel hath he been and querulous as with his own wants for trifles, as also with his neighbors in the younger days though now delighted in security and pleasure, and therefore stands upon reasonable conditions of peace with all the great and absolute foreign chiefs about him, and is likely more quietly settled among his own. When relying on English descriptions, we must care for biases and misconceptions that exist, but from these accounts it seems clear that the English first met Paramount Chief Powhatan later in his life, but that he still maintained the prowess and physique of a strong leader. He had maintained his paramount chiefdom for decades up until that point through a constant process of warfare, intimidation, redistribution of wealth, and family alliances. After acquiring a new territory, he would appoint a new chief called a werewans or a werewanskwa, depending on their gender, and keep their favor through constant threat of either being demoted or through gifting them status items such as copper and other niceties. Paramount Chief Powhatan required tribute to be paid to him, which could be in the form of copper, luxury goods such as pearls, rare shells, or bone jewelry, dive stuffs like pacoon, which was uh, used to produce a red pigment, or food and nice furs. Tribute would be passed from the people to their town werewants or werewansqua, then to their tribes werewants or werewansqua, and ultimately up to Paramount Chief Powhatan. According to an English author, each territory was required to present eight-tenths of what the land produced, but this seems pretty high. This number may actually represent the total tribute received by a lesser leader, which was then passed up the chain of command. Even though Paramount Chief Powhatan collected tribute, he seems to have lived much like a typical Powhatan man, hunting for his family and even wearing less opulent clothing and ornamentation when there were not important duties to attend to as Mamanatoic. It is difficult to talk about Paramount Chief Powhatan without talking about his famous daughter Pocahontas. Although she is portrayed in the Disney movie as his only daughter, Paramount Chief Powhatan likely had many children, just as he also had many wives. Unfortunately, many are not named, apart from his alleged favorite wife, Winganuske, another wife named Oholask, some's named Wakatanao and Nantaquad or Nakakwawis, and daughters named Matachana and Cleopatra, although the English likely poorly recorded her actual name and it's not, in fact, Cleopatra. 
Whether or not Paramount Chief Powhatan would have called Pocahontas his favorite daughter, though, in English accounts, Pocahontas does seem to have a lot of personality, which solidified her as a prominent figure in English writings. Paramount Chief Powhatan unfortunately died in April 1618, making him around 70 to 80 years old by English estimates. Nothing is known about where he died, what caused his death, or who was with him when he passed. Archaeologists still have not found any evidence of where he was buried. We hope you liked this video and it's shown you who Paramount Chief Powhatan was in a little more detail and cleared up some common misconceptions and myths about him and his Paramount Chiefdom. Don't forget to like this video and comment below with any questions or ideas for future videos. We put out new videos every Thursday and Saturday, so subscribe and ring that notification bell so you know when we upload new videos. Take care and we'll see you next time.